B might accept more. So it's kind of like that equals, but it's, is B bigger than A? Is B contained in A? Should I leave that one and then you'll think about it and talk to Dimitri about it in recitation and eat lunch in the meantime? It, that's just equivalent to doing one of these unions and copies. Yeah, is it? Intersections of A contained in B. And if we look at B minus A, and it's got mm -hmm. and A minus A, B will be an empty set. Do you want to talk about this today or not? You, you don't have to. You can, uh, not, that much to say. not much to say. I do want to say this one thing about it. What Chris is saying is pretty much right. But I want to just remind you of one little discrete math thing. Uh, you know how, uh, how intersection is like uh, a box of <laughs> 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 Intersection is like, multi like binary multiplication, and uh, union is like binary. Uh, Intersections like and, and and unions like or, right? And complements like not. not. What's, what's this like? <laughs> what is this like? That's true. <laughs> it's like implies from logic. X is an A implies X is an B. A implies B. Remember how to convert this to nots and ands and ors? What is this? Who remembers? Oh, nobody remembers. All right. Not A or B. Let's do that with sets here. The complement of A union B. What's going on? If you calculate the complement of A, is it union? Yeah. Union B. If you calculate this, that represents somehow this logical statement that A is contained in B. If this equals everything, if this is true for all the strings, if this equals sigma star, then A is contained in B. So I'm, I want to point this out just to go back and, you know, the logic and set connections all come back and give you a lot of power if you can remember them and use them. This is another way to do this problem. Calculate complement of A, union it with B, and then you can set it to, uh, to the single equality finite state machine that accepts everything. And we did equality before, so one decision algorithm builds on another. Last line before I quit today. Decision algorithms, we really care about whether they can be done or not. Is there an algorithm that answers yes or no? We don't usually care so much about the complexity unless we're really implementing it. The reason that is, Look, we really do care about complexity, but the reason that we focus more on whether it can be done or not is because the minute we're up to the next level of machines, push-down machines and context-free grammars, almost everything you want to know about them, you can't know. Forget efficiently, you can't know it at all. If I give you two context-free grammars and I ask you, are they the same? Do they generate the same language? Undecidable. You give me two compilers in general and ask me, are these two compilers doing the same thing? No way to write a program to check that. You give me two compilers and ask me, is there anything in common between the two that they accept? No way to do that. The only thing you can do for the next level is the membership problem. And that's actually compiling itself. Give me a grammar, give me a program. Does the grammar generate the program? Yes or no, that's compiling. That you can do. Nothing else. You can't do anything else. Well, one little thing. <laughs> you can hardly do anything. What's well, so an example of undecidable finance? There aren't any undecidable questions that are interesting about finite state machines. Everything's decidable about finite state machines. But there's lots of undecidable things about the next level. And when you get up to Turing machines, there's essentially nothing interesting you can decide about a Turing machine. <laughs> what a fascinating topic to talk about. There's actually a theorem. It's called, it's, it's called Rice's theorem. It says that any non-trivial property of a Turing machine is undecidable. And then they define what non-trivial is. A trivial property of a Turing machine is how many states it has. That's decidable. But anything interesting about a Turing machine is undecidable. Anyway, all right, let's quit here.